Right, so, oh wait, the intro. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Reno and in this video series I'm calling The Olfactory Library, I'm going to share to you guys my love for fragrances. And for today's video, this is made especially for the guys out there who wants to smell better and smell like a gentleman every day. For today's video, I have 13 fragrances and two honorable mentions, both from designer and niche for everybody to choose from. Starting with the honorable mention, this is Hugo Boss Bottled Oud Saffron. Just as the name would suggest, this carries a lot of oud and a lot of saffron, but never in a very off-putting way. If you are familiar with the Hugo Boss Bottled Perfume, this carries a whole lot of that DNA in here, the same kind of freshness that makes this perfume or the oud and the saffron in here less challenging. This is an everyday oud and saffron perfume that you could wear to the office, to work. The saffron and the oud in here just made this perfume really, really masculine on top of that very fresh DNA of the original Hugo Boss bottle. Now, I do have to say that this perfume, the oud saffron bottle, from the last I remember, about this one I think this was selectively distributed within Asia if not just in the Middle East if you know anywhere to get this one you should really try this one out it's very masculine it's very woody and can definitely work in a lot of situations or any weather conditions especially during colder weathers the saffron and the wood really is just going to shine the next bottle is the latest one from this list and this is coming from Ralph Lauren and this is Polo Double Black. This perfume carries a whole lot of the DNA of that original Polo perfume but made a whole lot fresher with that unique mango note at the top. If you're familiar with the original Polo perfume, the one that came in that green bottle with the gold cap, my dad used to wear that a lot back in the day. This one it took a whole lot of the, what is good of that perfume and made it a whole lot more modern. What made this perfume really unique and really modern and fresh at the same time is that unique mango note at the top. It's not the same kind of mango that I grew up with. This one is a little bit drier. Still very much a mango experience at the top. What I don't like about the original Polo perfume is that it has that abrasive sharp quality at the top. I guess it's coming from that synthetic leather note in the background. Here it's a lot more toned down. The reason why this is in an honorable mention is that it doesn't have the same kind of power as the original. It doesn't project as much. This is I think is a skin scent and this doesn't even last as long the original really just fills the room but this one really doesn't which is kind of like confusing because this is named as double black and from that name alone you would expect for the perfume to be a whole lot denser a whole lot louder but it's everything the opposite of that name had this perfume performed so much better this perfume would have probably been at the top five of this list but it doesn't and that's why it's in here so to start up with the list at the number 13 we have from the house of Hermes and this is Terre de Hermes ou Antoine's Vetever. This one, it took everything from the original and just made the base of this perfume a whole lot denser but more on the vetiver. It still carries the same kind of freshness coming from a lot of the citruses but mostly from the grapefruit at the top contrasting this very earthy but very very clean vetiver base. It has a touch of greenness and a touch of like dark vibe in the base to it but I think it's just coming from the patchouli but it's never loud. It's just very very clean and airy. How that intense vetiver works in here is it just made the original a whole lot more masculine and that is exactly why this perfume is on this list. For the next perfume, we are going to the House of Creed and this is Viking. Now this perfume takes inspiration just as what it is named from the Viking voyages. But no, it doesn't smell aquatic. It has prominent notes of bergamot, lemon, Sichuan pepper, and that touch of sweetness coming from tonka bean at the base. It's not the same as those tonka bean heavy fragrances where it's got this creamy experience to it. Here, the tonka bean 
only works as you know like added touch of sweetness at the bottom of this perfume this perfume opens with very bright citruses and even made fizzier and brighter because of that Sichuan pepper at the top of this perfume now this perfume was often compared to Old Spice colognes. I do have to agree to some extent, but this one is just made a whole lot more refined and a whole lot more naturalistic. Now this could be a perfect everyday perfume. In my experience, this works better when you wear it during hot weathers. But in a true Creed fashion, this doesn't last very long. But while this lasts, this is just really fresh and really, really invigorating and a perfect gentlemanly, very masculine perfume at that. For the next perfume, we have an OG and this is La Nuit de L'Homme from Yves Saint Laurent. This was originally released in 2009 and when this was released, everybody was just wearing this one. Every guy had this one on their dresser. A lot of people were wearing this one to clubbing, to night out. In my opinion, this started the cardamom craze in the perfume world. A lot of designer releases these days, especially when you're talking about clubbing perfumes or date night perfumes, they would always have that cardamom at the top. Because cardamom is just a really, really sexy note. It has prominent notes of cardamom, bergamot, and vetiver in the base. And with this perfume, YSL really worked around the note of cardamom and created this very fresh and very sexy cardamom bomb of a perfume. This one doesn't have a very massive projection, probably around arm's length, which is why this is a really good date night perfume because you wouldn't want to wear something that's very projecting, especially if you're going to a first date. You want to smell cozy, you want to smell warm, you want to smell inviting, and this is the perfume to go for that. It's really sexy, it's very sensual, it's very seductive, but at the same time will keep you smelling fresh for as long as it lasts on your skin or on your clothes. For the next perfume, we're going to the OG Blue Perfume, and this is from Christian Dior, and this is Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Now, for those who do not know, Blue Perfumes is what the perfume community called these perfumes that works like a Swiss army knife. Basically perfumes that works in any weather, in any occasions that you could ever think of. Now this is a really well blended perfume having that very creamy vanilla base and with a very fresh and zesty bergamot and a broxen at the top. Now I do have here the original Eau de Toilette. Well in this list I'm going for the Eau de Parfum. What I don't like about the original is the ambroxan and the way it works with the citruses at the top. The metallic experience that it's giving me is just it really just puts me off. Here a lot of that abrasiveness, a lot of the metallicness in the original is more toned down and with an amped up vanilla at the base really balances things out. Now I do understand that a lot of people love the parfum. The parfum for me is just a little bit denser with the base that I don't find it versatile enough. To me, this is the one that is the perfect Swiss knife perfume among the three. Works well in cold weathers, works well in hot weathers, and you could easily transition to a date night with this perfume because this perfume is a guaranteed compliment magnet. For the next perfume, we are going to the house of Sarge de Tans, and this is Santal Majuscule. This is a very creamy, woody experience with some chocolatey touches at the background. And in my opinion, nothing really screams sexy than a very creamy sandalwood perfume. This only has three basic notes in here, which are sandalwood, cacao, and rose. This is a sandalwood bomb, and it's a very, very creamy sandalwood at that. The cacao in here gives gives this that almost chocolatey touch but never going towards that gourmand direction. It just adds that bittersweet character to this perfume but never overwhelming the entire perfume. Although the sandalwood and the cacao in here create some sort of density to this perfume, you can still very much wear this safely as your everyday perfume because the projection in here isn't very loud. It will give you a very good fragrance bubble. It's just very warm and cozy that I almost thought that this perfume has some amber in the background in here but overall what you would get with this perfume is a very sexy warm and cozy perfume that you could easily wear to the office and transition into a date night. For the next perfume, we are going back to the house of Creed and you know this one had to be here. This is Aventis. This is the one perfume in this entire list that's going to guarantee you 
to give you a ton of unsolicited compliments. This was my signature perfume during the last year of med school and for about another year after med school. But back then, especially during my last year in med school, I have been switching between a decant of Creed or to its clones, the very famous Vibrant Leather from Zara or the Mont Blanc Explorer. So in between my bottles of Vibrant Leather or my Explorer, especially when I am in craving for the original one, I would buy decants of it and then go back to those clones. That is, I think, the reason why I'm kind of like sick of this perfume and that is why this is at this position on this list. During their celebration of their 10th year anniversary, I finally got my own bottle. My collection grew and I have been, you know, rotating my fragrances. So I haven't been reaching for this one as much, but when, every time I wear this, guaranteed there will be unsolicited compliments coming my way. So shout out to my friends Nicole who would always hug me and compliment me every time I wear this perfume. And to my friend Angela who would always say that she knows I'm in the hospital already when she smells this perfume. This does really quite project and has a really really good sillage but just as much as the Viking, this doesn't last as long. Although what I do have noticed from this 10th anniversary bottle in comparison to the decans that I bought back in the day. This perfume lasts a bit longer on me and as far as the notes are concerned, this still carries much of the juicy pineapple, bergamot, oak moss, and ambroxan in the background. But the base in this perfume, in my opinion, is a lot smokier and denser. Overall, this is a very bright and juicy perfume and a very good compliment pulling perfume that you could wear during date night or during formal occasions. A very true versatile perfume. So that's Creed Aventus. For the next perfume, we are going to the House of Penhaligans and this is Brilliantly British. It's very simplistic but carries that sense of complexity to it. And it makes sense because this only has two notes in here which are lavender and toffee. The use of lavender in here, which is very fresh and very green that it almost smells like a very freshly cut lavender. Even adds a touch of bitterness to the perfume. That in combination with the toffee, what you are going to get is this very fresh and aromatic salted caramel experience with this perfume. The toffee in here really is just very delectable and very decadent. And I would even go as far as saying that this will be a compliment magnet. You will have that touch of classic coming from the lavender, but made very modern and very unique with the twist of Tofi in this perfume. For the next perfume, we have a tie and both are coming from the House of Chanel. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Now, I do have to be honest with you guys that I am kind of sick of this perfume only because this was my signature perfume for two years during med school before I transitioned to wearing Aventus and some of its clones. There is a reason why this is the most well-loved blue perfume in the market right now and I do prefer this one over Jo Sauvage Eau de Parfum. In my opinion, this is just very well blended. It opens with a very bright and juicy citrus at the top with some spicy touches coming from the nutmeg and this very dense base coming from the incense, amber, and the patchouli. You can definitely wear this on a night out, on a date night, when you're in the mood for something deep, something rich, something sensual, something dense. This will give you that but also you will have that same freshness that you would need when you wear this on daytime or wherever if you're going to wear this to work. This perfume will also give you great projection as well. It will go. It is going to last you a whole day. So you won't have to worry about reapplying this one if you're going to wear this especially to work. Now for the perfume that it ties with, this is the OG and this is Chanel Long Homme. Now I have to admit that this was a blind buy and when I first tried this one, I really thought that this was not going to last because this opens with a very juicy and very watery citrus at the top that in my experience, you know, citruses don't really last as long. But this one carries a classic DNA of that citrus woody combination and that woodiness at the base really allows this perfume to latch on 
much longer in your clothes in particular. This perfume has prominent notes of citruses, you have lavender, you have oak moss, and you have the touch of sweetness coming from the van vanilla at the base. Now I know that a lot of people have shunned this perfume because it, to them it smells like an old man or it smells, it smells like an old man's cologne, which I kind of get because this perfume carries a dose of oak moss that is very prominent in a lot of perfumes back in the day. Now I think this controlled dose of oak moss in here is what gives this perfume a really classic and timeless touch but made very modern with this touch of fruity and citrus touches at the top of this perfume. This is the perfume what I imagine Christian Grey would wear to the office while his top performing employees would be wearing Blue de Chanel. For the next perfume, we are going to the house of Tom Ford and this is Effin Fabulous. This is one of my top favorites in my Tom Ford collection. I just think that people should really give this bad boy a chance because when this was first announced, a lot of people were so hyped and their expectations were so high because of its very unapologetic and very assuming name. But when this came out, not a lot of people were very happy with what they got. In my opinion, this perfume, it just smells really great. This perfume has prominent notes of lavender, almond, leather, but mostly from the suede leather, and then you have the tonka bean. Now, I think the combination of this very aromatic lavender and leather, along with the gourmand touches coming from both the almond and the tonka bean, is what makes this a very unique perfume, a very unique experience. And overall, what you would be getting is a very delectable, very addicting, very sexy, very seductive, and very loud and unapologetic perfume. For the next perfume, we're going to the house of Byredo, and this is Baudelaire. Now, right off the bat, when you first smell this perfume, you would think this is coming from the same veins as Polo Ralph Lauren or Bois de Portugal by Creed, those, you know, classic fougere, aromatic fougere. But what makes this perfume really unique, even though this perfume carries hints of those perfumes that I just mentioned, is that this unique use of leather in here, which is what I also noticed about Byredo's leathers because they always, to me, in my opinion, comes off as nutty. Perhaps it is a combination of the patchouli and amber that gives it off that nutty experience. But I just think overall, the leather in here, which is not animalic, not harsh, just this very light and airy leather in here that what makes this perfume modern, even though it carries a whole lot of the classic DNA of this classic perfumes that we are already very familiar with. The prominent notes in this perfume includes juniper berries, leather, and incense. It's the juniper berries at the top that really gives this perfume that added watery experience to this perfume. This is one of those leather fragrances that you can definitely wear every day because of those airy qualities to this perfume that keeps this very modern but with the classic touches in the background. For the next perfume, we're going to the house of Lueve and this is Mercurio from the Solo line. Now, I just think that this is a very, very underrated cardamom bomb perfume. I think overall, Lueve is a very underrated perfume house. In this perfume, the prominent notes include the fig leaf, orange blossom, cardamom, and you have the honey in the background. This, I think, is what lovers of La Nuit de Lome would wear during daytime. This is very much a cardamom forward perfume but made very, very fresh, made it very, very wearable during a hot summer day. And that is why I think that this is really a perfect versatile perfume with that very sexy and enticing touch of the cardamom at the top. This is like taking all that's good about Lanui de Lome and made it more a summer appropriate or a daytime appropriate perfume. But that being said, the presence of the dense cardamom in here is what is going to make this perfume work well during nighttime, during date night. But just like La Nuit de Lome, this doesn't have a big projection, probably about an arm's length and very soft projection at that. But you will be getting a lot more fresher vibe from this perfume over La Nuit de Lome. For the next perfume, we are going back to the house of Tom Ford and this is the very famous Beau de Jour. In my opinion, this is really the definition of modernizing a classic right off the bottom 
bottle, you will be greeted with this very heavy dose of lavender at the top and then that classic touch of oak moss in the background. Prominent notes to this perfume include the basil and the patchouli and amber in the background. This is one of those perfumes that when I wear it to work, I get a ton of unsolicited compliments. I think the touch of classic in this perfume is what is going to pull people towards your direction because of its famili familiarity. But because of this modern touches of this perfume, especially the lavender that is used here, has a lot of those greenish touches that makes this very fresh like a very freshly picked lavender. The added touches of the basil and the rosemary in the background is I think what makes this perfume a whole lot fresher than what you would imagine a perfume with this DNA would actually smell like. This perfume lasts a very long time. It keeps on projecting and although this kind of like has that linear experience, it doesn't develop much. To me, overall, this is just class in a bottle. For the next perfume, my number one is a hidden gem in the perfume world. It's a designer and this is from Burberry and this is London for Men. I honestly did not expect to fall in love with this perfume like I did because it has a prominent tobacco note at the top of this perfume and I for one is very sensitive towards tobacco note. I grew up hating the smell of tobacco itself but in this perfume, what you're gonna get is probably the smoothest tobacco experience you could ever smell. Along with it, it has prominent notes of cinnamon, lavender, bergamot, and oak moss. And like the other perfumes in this list, you will definitely get that classic DNA of men's cologne back in the day because of that dose of oak moss. I for one grew up hating the smell of that co classic combination of lavender and oak moss because to me they smell old it's very prominent in a lot of my dad's perfume back in the day but what really makes this unique like i said is that smooth tobacco at the top and with the added sweetness coming from the cinnamon is i think what makes this perfume really stands out among all of this perfume and really just toppled all of my other favorites in this list this one really would go down on my list of perfumes that I would repurchase once I would empty this one or would even buy a backup bottle of this one. It's just that good. That although yes, this doesn't smell like anything groundbreaking or anything that's new because of that classic DNA, but what really makes this unique, like I said, the way that this perfume modernizes that classic DNA using unconventional notes that you wouldn't think would work well in this DNA, what you would get at the end is a very sensual, very addicting, and a very phenomenal modern classic experience with this perfume. So that completes today's list. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do leave a thumbs up because it will definitely, definitely go a long way and help me with the YouTube's algorithm. And if you want to see a lot more content like this in the future, do consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be updated when I do upload new videos in the future and lastly I hope everyone will stay safe stay curious and I hope we can still see each other on the next one Annyeong